Light worker syndrome is what happens when a person awakens to a higher level of consciousness, but is unaware of how to live that purpose and nourish themselves at the same time. These people have great difficulty staying connected to higher levels of consciousness while remaining deeply grounded in the physical world. Many of these people become so frustrated by this experience that they become depressed and want to give up and simply return to the non-physical world. Spiritual connection versus physical anchoring. These troubled light workers often feel like they have to make a compromise, either stay connected there at this higher level of consciousness and not be grounded at all, or lose this higher connection and become more grounded. But it is a difficult compromise, so many doubt the right direction to follow. They often end up sacrificing their purpose or their income because it is a real challenge to succeed in reconciling both at the same time. But this either-or decision affects us negatively in the long term. You can't stay focused on a goal if you're worried about paying the rent and you can't earn a good income if you're not inspired by your work. The real trap is the very belief in either-or. It is a mistake to think that you cannot attract abundant resources by doing what you like. Many light workers are so sensitive to the idea of sacrificing their purpose for money that they figure it's better to have no money at all or just enough to live on. Fear of your own power. You can't maintain a stable connection to the universe and keep your feet on the ground at the same time because you're afraid of what it would mean if you succeeded. It is possible to stay connected to life and at the same time keep your feet on the ground. This is not a simple new age concept, it is purely practical. On one hand, I have my purpose, my spiritual beliefs and feeling like I have a connection with everyone. When I resonate with these thoughts, I am motivated to serve and help people all day long. But I also live in the physical world. I have to meet my family's basic needs and my own, which means I need income. Connection plus anchoring equals synergy. Ultimately, these two sides are not really in conflict. They may have different energies, but they are not inherently opposites. In fact, they support each other. The spiritual side provides motivation that lasts over time. When I feel mentally connected, I am motivated, I am passionate, I am full of energy, and I am peaceful. It's an incredible motivator to do any kind of work, work that may very well help me get more grounded simply by generating more income. And on the other hand, when I have my feet more on the ground, when I am more physically and financially stable, I am freer. I have more means. I don't have to worry about paying the bills. And this also brings to the spiritual side because I can devote more time to spiritual developments. So these two energies are naturally complementary. When they work together, they work synergistically. What will happen if you succeed? The real barrier to achieving a balance between connection and grounding is the limiting belief you may have about what might happen after you achieve your balance. What will really happen when you achieve your life's goal and earn more money than you need to continue doing it for the rest of your life? It turns out that you will succeed in great widths. When you do what you love and you earn a lot of money from it, a positive spiral begins. These two sides support each other. Your purpose drives your actions, your actions drive your results, and your results produce revenue. Your income gives you more freedom and more energy for your goal. And all of that perpetuates itself because when you get there, it's a stable pattern. With great power comes great responsibility. Light workers often fear having a lot of responsibility when they achieve their goal. And you know it is this fear that harms their income. The best way to increase your income is to help people. But in practice, it's not that simple, especially if your beliefs hold you back. Many light workers are capable of providing real value to others, yet they don't do it on a large scale. When receiving advice on how they could double their income by doubling the number of people they help, without doing more work, the usual response is resistance and excuses. However, we can see the real answer in their eyes. They fear what will happen if they actually get their way. Overcoming the fear of responsibility, well, the only way to overcome them is to face them head on. Personally, I recognized that I had the inner resources to do much better, but I imposed limits on myself. I knew I wasn't doing my best, but why? Quite simply because I wasn't ready to accept the consequences of doing my best. 
If I truly did my best, it would have a greater impact on my life. I would attract more people to me. I would end up with a lot of responsibilities. It's honestly frightening. And it turns out those fears were well-founded. I have a lot of responsibilities now. When I achieved this connection anchoring balance and set up this positive spiral, my results continued to improve. But my true motivation comes from a deep desire to make a positive difference in the world. My passion comes from my purpose, not my income. Position versus power. I told myself, with great power comes great responsibility, and I found that I assumed that my power would increase if I really did my best. In other words, I put power and position on the same level. With the increase in my position, my power would also increase, as would my responsibilities. At that moment, I had a revelation. What if power didn't come from position? If I have the potential to get better, but I don't strive for it, does that mean I still have that power? If I don't use my power, that doesn't mean I don't have power. It only means that I am inactive. I realized that I could never escape responsibility by not taking action. I could only escape control. You can give up all control, but never your responsibilities. Realizing this was a big kick in my complacency. Even though I felt like I was in a relatively powerless position from the outside, in that moment, I finally accepted my inner power. This meant accepting responsibility for this power. And obviously, according to the law of attraction, once I began to resonate with this inner power, it was only a matter of time before the outside world reflected it. Overcoming Lightworker Syndrome. Lightworker Syndrome is a lack of acceptance of one's own power. This lack of acceptance is what leads to this apparent conflict between connecting to source and anchoring to physical reality. What is inside is reflected outside. Your inner conflict appears in your outer reality. You fear your true power, so you silently send out the intention to remain weak. This creates an endless loop of distractions that keeps you preoccupied enough that you don't have to think about what you're really doing. You stay small because you fear responsibility too much. If you recognize that you are suffering from light worker syndrome right now, you know that you will never solve this problem with the same level of thinking that created it. Realize that you are the one who creates the painful health problems, the unexpected financial crisis that wipes out your savings just when you are starting to get by, the unfulfilling relationship, etc. You create all of this because you resonate with fear. It is a very big distraction. Once you are ready, you have the power to put a stop to these trivial problems and stop manifesting them. But once you do that, you will have to deal with the real problem that is there in the first place. Accept your inner light. If you feel like you are a light worker, understand that your real job is to accept and appreciate your inner light. You are here to shine, not to be erased. If you feel that life in this physical universe is pulling you down, it is because you are not yet in vibrational harmony with your light. You came here to do good on this planet, so step up and do it. You are responsible for what you came here to do, whether you like it or not. The planet needs you now, not another day. I wish you the best. I wish 